I've read 73 fantasy standalones and these 10 are my favorite must read stories that even if it's just one book are as good if not better than some concluded trilogies or longer series. And let's just start with some honorable mentions. The first one it's a story from an author that I thought we were sworn enemies. I read one of her standalones and I did not understand a thing. From that point onwards I was like meh this is not for me. However when I gave this book a chance I discovered that magic exists. It's a book that it's wonderful if you're seeking something that it's character driven but it has just this world building that in itself it's a character in the story and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This story it's mesmerizing from page one. It's magic at its best and it's whimsy. It's a story that it won't be for everyone in every step of the journey in their lives, but if you're looking for something that will make you feel awe, that will make you inspired, then read this. We will mainly follow these two characters throughout their lives and the magic that surrounds them. They are able to do magic, but that magic it's done in a way that it's beautiful and the circus it's fascinating one of my favorite things about this book is that it trespasses that barrier it just it talks to you the reader and it persuades you to imagine the beautiful setting of the night circus it is fascinating. My favorite author has multiple standalones that are really worth the mention but one in particular was the first book that I read from him. It was my first standalone and it really consolidated the fact that fantasy stories don't need to be really long stories in order to be fulfilling. It's a story that made me feel magical. It allowed me to know hot magic systems. It had different points of view in a setting that is fascinating and it has this inspiring oh my god fantasy is amazing kind of vibe and that is Elantris by Brando Sando. This book is here because it was such a milestone in my life. I was fascinated by these and it was actually one of my favorite books of all time until I sadly reread it some years ago and I was like oh my god no! I've read so many other great books from that moment and you know the story faded a little bit but I promise you if you are looking for something that it's very easy to read, a prose that it's in incredibly accessible but at the same time you have different characters with very different motivations one of them it's a very religious man other it's more political and another one it's more an altruistic kind of character then this will be it for you it has everything that Sanderson then delivers and makes better in all the stories but you will have religion you will have action you will have politics you will have romance a world that is broken it's really interesting there's this sickness that one day you can can have and if you have it you are going to be forsaken to the city called Elantris. One day the prince of this realm wakes up and has the sickness and the story unfolds from there but everything is about to crumble. And before we get to our next amazing pick let me tell you about the creative writing classes that today's sponsor has. If you want to learn the basics about storytelling, learn how to craft compelling characters by top tier authors such as Sava Tahir, Ah, then I have good news for you because Skillshare, which is the largest online learning community for creative people like you, has launched curated class collections so that you can master any skill. They have a wide variety of topics ranging from illustration, graphic design, photography, productivity, and of course, creative writing skills. I've already covered the creative writing path together with my patrons, and it's been such a journey. It's been so exciting to learn this skill together. So if you want to join us, let me know down below and make sure to use my link in the description because the first 500 people that uses my link will have one month free. It has been truly, truly amazing. We've discovered not only how to interview characters, which has been so much fun, but also the basics about fantasy and sci-fi world building, which is so insightful, not only if you want to write, but also for reading, I believe it's generating like more knowledge. So if you want to join our quest and learn all of these stuff, don't hesitate to check Skillshare and thank you so much for checking my sponsors whenever I have them. Okay, and now let's continue with my next amazing pick for standalones that you cannot miss. Honorable mention, but honestly, it's a story that sometimes it goes to my top, sometimes it goes back. It just really depends on my mood. But this author, it's the queen of Greek retellings and I really loved both Song of Achilles and Circe. But Circe in this case really touched me because it followed Circe 
throughout her life and it was really inspiring it was really painful and it was beautiful action-packed really plot driven but really beautifully told it was a fascinating read beginning to end and if you are a lover of greek mythology then this is it for you because you will see a lot of different stories coming and blending and it was just so good so fascinating and also very fun the last honorable mention is a sci-fi story that i read not so long ago and that absolutely broke my mind it was mind-blowing i don't believe i read a book that has a pacing as fast as this one every chapter inspired i need to keep reading it's a story that will cure any reading slump. The only thing that I resented from this book is that I did not have enough time to read it in just one sitting but I honestly was thinking all of the time I need to keep reading and that is Dark Matter. This is a hardcore sci-fi story but it reads in strangely easy I reckon there were some points that I was not able to fully comprehend because it really touches on some really profound hardcore sci-fi topics but all in all the main story it's really accessible and we will follow this man that one day is kidnapped and thrown into this life that it's like his own but it's not his own so it has a lot of these time travel shenanigans that I absolutely loved and honestly so 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 good in position number 10 a story that was hilarious was so very well done was adventurous had a lot of smart moments but the pacing was incredible a very good blend between character and plot driven and it has dragons and secret societies and that is guards guards by terry pratchett i got this one recommended by daniel green and although i tried this a while ago i felt this was not for me at the moment i gave this one another try and goodness i was cackling all of the time laughing out loud and i don't believe that's something that happens really frequently in this case i really recommend going for the book instead of the narration because there are so many phrases that are so well done that you will love to reread and just going and admiring the genius that terry pratchett was it's a story that begins with the god of the city and they don't really like to do their job but a dragon seems to be attacking this city and we have a new recruit and everything it's so incredibly and we will have this very fascinating blend of characters that are broken in one side others that are incredibly naive very funny moment charming easy to read and very very well done top nine we have a story that it's completely different to Garcats. it's a story that reads more slowly that it's way more dense and it plays more with the anger emotions with making you think it's a dark academia story and it's done in in a way that it's even if the pacing it's really really slow the work of the characters is so incredible and you will follow one of them especially throughout his life you will see how this character advances and i remember thinking this story is so savage and once i finalized this book i was mad and i couldn't stop thinking about the themes that were discussed which is colonialism there's also sexism racism there's a lot to impact in babel by erif kwang if you read a puppy war by the same author you know those feelings that the author is able to convey in the reader but in this case i was so fascinated because you get to see this scholarly vibe this theme of these characters that are about to get into babel they're about to learn this language magic the thing here is that this magic it's used to do a lot of stuff and one of those is to colonialize and the key thing is that the people that are able to do this magic especially in other countries are people that knows to speak those languages so there's a very interesting theme what it is to rebel against what you've learned all your life it reads really beautifully a little bit dense you really need to be into mood but it's a story that i guarantee won't fail you five star top eight we have a story that it's magical realism and it feels so unique it feels like being a child all the way through not necessarily in the beautiful side but more in the nostalgic side and there are parts that while you read it are really hard and that will make you really reflect 
on oh my goodness what was happening uh, but at the same time it's beautiful and it just it has this magic that only these author it's able to convey i believe nail gaiman it's one of those genius that are able to pull magic into words and i was really on the fence because i think that stardust is also a very beautiful standalone but in this case i'm bringing here the house at the end of the lane it's a story that it's super short so it's definitely one to bring you out of islam because you can read in just one sitting but at the same time it's a story that you will want to savor the narration it's also phenomenal because the man nail gaiman reads it and it just it makes for a very unique experience it will make you feel different things depending on the moment of your life in which you are and mainly will follow this man that needs to travel to his childhood house because of a funeral and there he will start to remember things that he forgotten it's magical it's whimsical but at the same time it's slightly dark and honestly fascinating it's one of those books that will make you look within in the top seven we have a story that i knew i needed to read for ages but you know i was not really compelled to read it the premise was very meh for me and people were saying time and time again no you need to read this because it's beautiful but it's also really dark and it just it's a story that it's very unique and i was like meh i don't believe that's it for me so it's really a challenge now to share this with you in a way that will make you want to pick this one up and it's one of those reads that once that you finish it you just want to stare into the wall for hours and reflect about what loneliness is what courage and you know the fate of your life what you want to do with your life and that is the invisible life of Adi LaRue by B. Schwab I read more stories by B. Schwab before and honestly I've loved almost all of them so i don't know why this book wasn't really compelling me but the premise of this girl that sells her soul to a demon and therefore she will live forever but the trade-off is that she will be forgotten was somewhat not for me i don't know why but there's just so many beautiful things here so listen 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 if that already piques your interest then fine amazing because it's honestly great but if not, pick it up. Just read the first, I don't know, 10 pages and you will feel that the prose, it's beautiful. It's not purple, but it reads with such an intense feeling that it is... It, it really mesmerized me. The world building, it's great. And we will be following Adi throughout her life, throughout different stages of her life. And you will be going back and forth in her life. And although I thought that was not going to be for me, it definitely was knowing how she danced throughout different stages of life and how she advanced and how she discovered who she was. That was such a journey. It is beautiful please give this one a go. In the top six, we have a story that was the first one that made me cry happy tears. It's a story that made me feel that life is wonderful, that there is hope, that there is you know that beautiful sense that people has potential and that we are all very precious humans and that is the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune this story really has something different the author is able to pull his classic dark humor in a way that nonetheless really made it click for me because i was really compelled by this story we will be following this middle-aged man that it's kind of like a workaholic and his job is to ensure that the orphan children are well taken care of but there's a twist here because the children that he looks after are all magical and one day he will get this assignment to go to this house in the cerulean sea where the most dangerous children are held and he will need to see if they are well taken care of because if that's not the case and they display even an ounce of being dangerous to the world terrible things will happen but once that we get there we see how the arc of this character really changes how he he discovers himself passion for life again and the children it's they are wonderful there's a sprite a demon a werewolf there's a blob that wants to work as if he were in a hotel and it just it is so beautiful it's a very easy read but at the same time it touches topics that are somewhat profound so really tj clone please pick this one up if you want to feel inspired you want to feel happy and recover that faith of life it's beautiful please pick this one up top five we have 
have a story that it's magical realism and it has this blend of being really character driven, being a thriller and also having a main character that it's just a cinema role. It's a story that will ask you to believe in the process and you know eventually things happen but you don't really know what is happening and it's incredibly unique because it is told from a almost scientific perspective and that is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. This story will follow Piranesi and he is alone in this house that is as big as the world. And the magic here it's not only that the house can do stuff that it's weird but that Piranesi it's naive and that he really wants to figure things out and he is in complete awe in love with the house and everything that surrounds it and when things go down and you start to discover what happens you will feel things really low on magic very 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 short unique Position number four, and things are really hard from here. We have a story that fascinated me from the beginning. The premise of having a character that is able to paint nightmares and therefore those nightmares lose their power. I felt it's so cathartic, but also the world building here, it's an element in itself and it just, it's so beautiful. In one hand, we have a world that it's in complete darkness and it's only illuminated by these two neon lines that surrounds the whole world. In one, it's kind of purple and the other one, it's kind of blue and illuminating that in my mind was fascinating. And it just, there's, this Freaky Friday kind of element and it is beautiful and the prose it's easy and it just it made me feel ah oh, that is Jimmy and a Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson this was secret project number three my favorite of all secret projects the illustrations of this book are amazing I mean can you see that? It's a story that at its core tries to solve who are you and what's your position in the world. And I felt that to be incredibly relatable. It's a story that follows these two characters that live in complete different places. One of these characters is Painter and he needs to face these nightmares because in this world they are emerging. And in the other we will have this girl that is able to commune with the spirits if she's able to put these different rocks in a balance and it's that mindful element that it was so beautiful but the thing here is that one day they change places and they need to discover what to do there's a lot of learning the magic learning what is the job meanwhile discovering yourself discovering love it is so good and wholesome in position number three we have a sci-fi here that touches on themes that are not absolutely new meaning we will wake up in space not knowing what we are doing, who we are or anything in the process and the magic of this story is that the character is able to face that situation with optimism and managing that in a way that it's adventurous, that it displays an incredible amount of resilience and I found that so inspiring, therefore why it's one of my favorite books of all time and that is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This story, it's Mm, so very well done. That's one thing that I don't want to unveil, but that is making this story so good. Jazz hands, if you know, you know. But if you like The Martian, this book, it's so much better, in my opinion. It still has that hardcore sci-fi element that touches into biology, in this case, right? A little bit into language, into figuring things out, into traveling space and knowing what is our mission. Meanwhile, really coping with tough situations. In a way, it reminded me to Interstellar and it's my favorite movie. This is one of my favorite books. It is really accessible. The writing style, it's phenomenal. It read, It's a very good blend between action-packed but also character-driven. The prose is easy. The characters are unforgettable and it just, it made me laugh. It made me almost cry and I was in love with this story almost from the beginning. Position number two, but it might be position number one as well. I reread this book recently because it was picked as the Patreon book of the month. So if you want to join us to read amazing books, join us in the Wheel of Time read along, please do so. I will link everything down below in the description. But this story, it's fascinating because it has tropes and then it just takes all of those tropes and just remake them. You hear Love Triangle and you kind of know what to do 
but no. You hear chosen one, but no. You hear war, but no. You hear enemies to lovers, no. What you read here, it's a very rich and unique story that, yes, granted, it's told in a very different way because you start in the middle of the book and something very intense is happening and then you're thrown back to the past understanding this and you are in a Victorian society. Take that Pride and Prejudice element and then blend it with war and what you will have is this beautiful and unique story that is Guns of the Dawn. It is so very well done like from the beginning first pages i knew i knew this was going to be one of my favorite books of all time and upon a reread i've just only consolidated my love for this story i'm seeing now more things about what it means to be at war ptsd characters really evolving and just ah oh, it is low on magic so also a beautiful start if you want to get into fantasy there are so many good things about this story that i really don't know where to start the prose it's really really easy but it's something that reads beautiful the characters are raw and they definitely grow a lot you will feel for them and at the ending it's so unexpected i love this beginning to end please give this one a go in the top one and this has been the same for a long time we have a story that made me cry like no other and i believe because of that it's in this position because having a story that it's able to convey so many strong emotions and still being a standalone that is an achievement this is fascinating world building you have elemental magic you have drama and that is the sword of kagan by emil wong very well loved within booktube but still if you go outside and ask your friends mm, chances are people have not read this so please be the change be the person that reads this and then goes and tries to sell this to all the people please it's so well done the family dynamics the characters how they evolve it's so unique we will be following especially a mother and a son and that is so unique and we'll see this society and they are the last resource again an invasion they are kind of like the only ones that still live through the samurai ways and you will see those elements blended and that's also a very interesting conversation oh, mm, i can still cry if i remember the two elements the two moments of this story that really will take your heart and break it it is a little bit different because you will have a very intense pace at the beginning and then things up till 40 percent 50 percent of the book kind of slow down a little bit which is very different but it is so rewarding it is fascinating please give this one a go and let me know afterwards i'm still need to meet the person that reads these same as guns done honestly but that reads these and don't love it so please 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 give this one a go and let me know down below which is your favorite book however if you want to see which are the most underrated but still five star reads of your favorite booktubers make sure to check this video 